The idea of allowing companies to run train services was simple. In return for making a profit, private investors would take some risk off the taxpayer, encourage innovation, and use their balance sheets to invest. So how did that work out? The misery of Southern Rail is the latest chapter in a long narrative of failure. Industrial action, cancelled and overcrowded trains, and growing political support for renationalisation. The best way forward is for the public to run it. As the public ran East Coast Main Line at a profit, this is not a sensible way of running a public railway system, which we have all paid for through huge levels of public investment in the track and the signalling systems. Today we learn that fares will rise by 1.9% in January in Great Britain, while consumer price inflation is just 0.6%. And research by trade unions suggests rail fares have increased at double the speed of wages since 2010. Many of the problems that we have with our dysfunctional privatised rail system as it stands at the moment is precisely the, the fragmentation and of course the cost of that, which means that instead of our fares going to uh, invest in the rail system, instead they're going out into the hands of, of private shareholders. The underlying problem is that our railway is expensive to run. Back in 2011, an official report implied a journey that would cost around £1.20 in fare and public subsidy in other European countries would cost about £2 in Britain. So our fares in 2011 were about 30% higher than those of our peers. And we put in more public subsidy. The most important reason why our rail is so expensive is infrastructure. The flip side of our very beautiful Victorian stations is we have a lot of Victorian rail, which is expensive to maintain and run. We also, as a country, tend to run a lot more services with relatively few passengers on them. And that too boosts our underlying cost base. So would nationalisation help? Well, those unusually high costs mainly relate to network rail, which runs the track, and that's already nationalised. The private train operating companies, they made over £200 million of profit last year, but that money would only fund a 2.5% cut in the average fare. Advocates for franchising see that as a price worth paying for performance improvements. Well, there's one big number that matters most. Under British Rail, numbers using the railways consistently fell. Since 1995, when it was privatised, journeys have doubled in just 20 years. But I think that franchising has a lot of problems. It's not necessarily a natural way to run railways. All across the world, including here, companies built the railways up, track and train together. So separating them as we do, forcing them to be separate, isn't necessarily a good idea. Southern's recent woes may be another cause for pause. In this case, a private company doesn't actually have that much freedom to run the business. They're just being paid a fee to administer the railway for central government. Whitehall is calling the shots. Right now, it strikes me that we're getting the worst of all worlds. We've got the privatised system plus a government that isn't being accountable. What we would have, I think, if the rail company were properly in, in public hands, and, and by that I don't just mean the state, we could have far more imaginative systems of mutuals, of uh, local authorities getting more involved and so on. But if it were in public hands, then for a start, the contract would be fully public, so we could see exactly what the terms are, and it would be fully accountable to the public as well. So would a nationalised rail system necessarily get more public money? In short, perhaps not. Governments are always struggling to contain the cost of housing and healthcare. They're always under pressure to spend more on education. And the experience of British Rail suggests that in that context, it's very hard to politically make the case for spending more on railways. certainly botched the franchising of its rail services and we've all paid the price but renationalization equally might not be a breeze